ain't the kind of place to raise your kids i think probably not i hear it's a little cold Cold and uh non-oxygeny is that a word hey everybody it's the rc groups podcast that's right let me turn this music off so uh i thought that since it takes a while for live people to show up that we might have a little musical interlude and why not play the song that i've been making these people are building a garage out here in a yard across from me Yep. And I'm like, they can't leave. So I go and play music, you know, long <laughs> enough until they might get a little pissy. And then I, uh, then I, are we still doing that? Should I go get my tuba? Tuba. Okay. I'm touching the mic. Everyone watch out. It's crazy. I got, I got my kid a harmonica. He's actually good at it. Five years old. He can he move all around, play notes, things. He doesn't just go, <laughs> you know, like most, like I do. <laughs> <laughs> your son's very talented yeah he is he's a pretty talented little kid i play the guitar along while he plays the uh harmonica what did he call it i don't know what he calls it anyway have you seen the thing about if the guy that named the walkie talkie if he named other stuff like the roly coasty and <laughs> i have <laughs> not <laughs> that sounds pretty i should google it hey everyone you are on the our secrets podcast hey we have some stuff today you know it's uh we probably will talk about random rc topics but I actually have a special guest right here in the office, the IX-12. She's a beaut. And Jason Cole, actually, uh, I'm going to brag here in a minute about it, but Jason Cole actually got to uh, play with it a little bit today because we went to the airfield. And, you know, why wouldn't you, Matt, when it's 34 degrees? Yeah, it's like what it is here. I woke up this morning. It was snow everywhere. It's not even called for in the uh, forecast yet. There was snow. There were 18. I'm sorry. I just was thinking of something and talking about something else. Uh, it was 80 degrees yesterday, right? Was that just yesterday, Jason? It seems impossible. It's Tuesday. Tuesday, it was 80 degrees. Tuesday was 80 something in 30 mile per hour winds. And I yep. had to go fly a drone in that FYI. And it was not too bad, really. It you can awesome. do it. You can do it. But yeah, so warm and then so cold today. I did not want to go to the field, but. I knew we needed to. It was important. I'm glad we, we went. We had a special uh, bulletin come through the the uh, coconut lines here. And I really, Jason, the night before I said, I just can't believe this is actually going to happen. But Jason and I got up early. Um, I actually took a shower, pretty rare, and headed down <laughs> to the airfield. Uh, and Matt, do you know who's there? Uh, Hobby King. Rob from Hobby King was making a special appearance at our airfield. I doubt he even knows that Jason and I fly there. So it was kind of a, a surprise appearance by us on him as well. And did he know who you were? Yeah. Uh, Jason, do you think I did a good, I wanted to not, he was there to talk to the club guys. And I was like, St don't talk too much. Cause, <laughs> but, but it was very interesting. We had a great discussion about hobby King and hobby King, New York. And, um, he is, I keep getting his description wrong. He's in charge of events. So they're actually going uh, community advocate, customer advocate. Yeah. 
That's it. I keep calling it. It should be the word outreach in there. Always community outreach, customer advocate associate. And many, I guess, I guess the good news from my perspective, if you're a Hobby King fan and like their stuff and like to order from them is they are working on improving customer service and, and being more proactive. And uh, I found out that they, you know, they use a, it's called a 3PL, uh, but it's basically a third party warehouse uh, in the U S and it, it's just like paying someone to manage your inventory for you and ship it out amongst, you know, hundreds of other clients that they might have. So there's things that they don't control, like the staffing of that warehouse and, you know, how quickly they take care of shipping and, and packing and pulling orders and doing all that stuff. There's some things they don't have control. So there's been talk of opening up a, another Ooh. warehouse that they, I, 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 hold on. He did say off the record on many of the topics we discussed. So I hope <laughs> this is, I hope this isn't one of those topics. No, this, this was something that was just being discussed. This was okay. Okay. keep it between us kind of things. I don't want to think. Uh, he said, this is just between us. <laughs> hey, everybody. These are called non-disclosure agreements, and we just violated them. I'm just kidding. Anyway, oh, the point is. Probably that's a they, joke. That's a they joke. want to provide great customer service, and they're working towards that goal um, of improving it and just making it better constantly. So that's the good news for us. And they're also the – everyone, he said, asks for – the New York guys when they're calling in for support. So they're actually trying to train up all the other support outlets. It depends on what time of the day it is as to who you reach, because some people are asleep. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that he said, they're working on that. And then they're also going to Joe Nall. That, hey, you, Matt, you know how you and I were debating on whether they're actually going to be at Toledo or not based on the That's list. Correct. Yeah. They, are they, they were debating the same thing. And uh, they are not going to Toledo. They're actually going to AMA West. Ah, uh, that, that old play. I'm just kidding. Yeah, that stinks <laughs> that they're not going to be there, but Land it is there. what it is, which is my main statement these days. Let it is what it is. AMA West is definitely a warm environment of which to uh, have a great trade show. Right. Like uh, temperature wise or yeah. friendly. Uh, wise. There's palm trees. It's uh, just like when you fly in, you fly over these crazy red uh, lakes. Have you flown in there, Jason? Is it is it Ontario, California? Yeah. Yeah, I have been there. I've been there once, yeah. And it's it's very California. It's very GTA 5 uh, yeah, from the yeah. air, for sure. Oh, we'll see them at Joan All next month. Yeah, and then, but they're going to be at Joan All and bring their whole crew. They are. We yep. also got word. Uh, you know what? Should we do that interview now? Do you have the ability to show that on the podcast now? Like hold it up to your camera? Uh, well, I haven't. I should be able to post it. But we did get confirmation that the Grand Tundras came out last week. They're available for sale. Yeah, thank gosh. Hopefully I'll get some floats for mine. I love my Tundra. <laughs> no, but he did say literally any day. Any yeah. day. Oh, wait. You're yeah. just making that up? The Grand <laughs> Tundras aren't out? No, I said, like, I said they came out last week. So it obviously didn't come out last week. But. They don't have a hard date, but it's like any day. It's like Uber imminent that's going to arrive and be available. So Uber yeah. imminent. That sounds Uber like a, that sounds like an Uber new version of. All right. of uh, Let me. Uh, I'm going to pop up this video window, and then I'm going to jump over here and share my screen. Hopefully, we get the audio. So we were trying to get him on the podcast, but the time frame didn't work out. And I said, "Well, let's interview you." I'll stop talking. How's that look? Is that full screen for you, or do I need to make it bigger? That looks awesome. Okay, here we go. Let's see if you can hear it. Hey, everyone. Jim T. Graham with RC Groups. We're here at our local field. Jason Cole is behind the camera. He uh, looks like the Unabomber. It's kind of chilly out here today. <laughs> and and uh, we were we knew this was happening. We weren't sure if uh, we showed up, if Rob would actually be here. But this is Rob from Hobby King. What's going on, Rob? Oh, not much. Just... <laughs> <laughs> so if you're wondering who is Rob from Hopkin, you might know him since you're an RC group user, but Rob is the consumer advocate or uh, is that the official term now? Customer advocate. Customer. Yeah. Oh, way to screw that one up. And so uh, I'm going to say one thing and then I'm going to say another. First of all, if you call the New York ranch, you might talk to Rob, but I think Rob would like to tell you about all the other great people up there that you can talk to that are just as good or are almost as good as you are, right? Uh, we're all on the same team. Everybody in the New York office, we've got uh, we've got quite a few people in there now. 
And uh, yeah, we're all on the same team, all working to just make Hobby King as great as it can be. And so you guys are in New York and you're shipping out of there. And did I hear you say, I know some of your crew is going to Joe Nall, but are you going to Joe Nall? I will be at Joe Nall, yep. Um, I'm also the event coordinator. So uh, I will be down there with some of the uh, customer service and product support people as well. And uh, we've been going down the last few years, having a great time. And every year we just try to make it a little bigger, a little better. So look forward to some really cool stuff coming down to Joe Nall this year. Our pilots in this club have a lot of Hobby King planes and Tundras are everywhere, have been everywhere. I'm sure they've crashed more than they actually own at this point. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. Hey, and meet the club members and yeah. uh, see yeah. what was going on, right? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Is there any Hobby King breaking news? Is the Grand Tundra on the way? Is there anything that you can leak? that uh, you wouldn't get in trouble for. <laughs> the Grand Tundra is coming out any day now, and I mean any day now, so it's soon. Um, yeah, everybody knows the, the Super Scale Spitfire from Avios is also coming out very soon. I don't have an exact date, but uh, very soon we've all gotten used to that. <laughs> uh, and there's some really cool stuff. It's going to be a big, big year for Avios to refly Hobby King in general as far as aircraft. A lot of new models coming, a lot of really cool stuff, some some unusual stuff. I think we've got the uh, the Slowpoke that's coming out that was just previewed. So we've got that. A lot of folks love those little guys. That's the beauty of Hobby King. They, you know, some people stick to the standards, and you guys definitely will break. Uh, Is that a lawnmower back there? Times and go out on the edge. Yep. Yeah, you know, diversity is, uh, is is a good thing. You know, it, we all love the standards. There's nothing wrong with that. But um, you know, getting outside of the the usual circles is good too. You know. So we just wrapped up our contest for the Avios uh, RC Group's plane, and I hear there's more parts coming for that on the way. Spring is here, so now is the time to start grabbing up these airplanes. The Grand mm -hmm. Tundra mm -hmm. is awesome, and Matt Gunn has that. One moment. Hello? Oh. <laughs> yeah, <RC. laughs> Like, oh, I'm a director call. Well, man, we appreciate you coming down here and meeting the guys. And it's Thanks awesome so to meet you. And we uh, we do Joan all right. So when we get down there, we're going to find you. Sounds good. Yeah, I look forward to it. All right. yeah. You guys have the same glasses on. <laughs> Very close. Scooby-Doo glasses is what they look like. <laughs> uh, well, that's awesome. Here, let me. Uh, okay, you got the presenting off. So there's more Durfly goodies coming this year, which I hope there would be. They are really doing a great job with that lineup. Rob was a super nice guy. Had a lot of future uh, uh, things to talk about. Um, just all the plans for Hobby King and what's coming down the line. And everybody. Get from him, though? Say what? You know what we didn't get from him? Mm -mm. A simmer down now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> He, he would have been like, simmer down now, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get it at Joe Ralph. You know, I meant to take him to lunch, but I'm pretty sure, I bet money he was uh, heading up to uh, see his buddy and they were probably doing lunch. So I don't feel too bad about missing that. That was actually a phone call. It was my daughter's birthday today. She's 17 years old. I bought her a bouquet of flowers, maybe the first uh, bouquet of flowers she's ever received. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, very awesome. I'm glad we got to do that. And I got to say, 34 wasn't as cold as it sounded. What do you think, Jason? Well, it warmed up. I mean, it was 40. It was almost 50 when I left. And it was not too bad windy. But I actually took my jacket off, had just my inner coat on, and flew my DLG for a little bit. Um, that was the first time I got to fly this year, that plane. And it was just, it felt like home. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I love this thing so much. I got a few thermals and you know, it's just so much fun. I miss it. So well, I'm really excited to get to do that again. Let's talk about what else we did. We met with my kind to uh, work with Jason and I back in the olden days. Yep. And now he is a reviewer at uh, RC groups and he has a bevy of horizon airplanes right now. Jason, what did you flew some videos for him to finish up some reviews? What did you put in the air? Yeah. So I flew the new uh, T6 for me flight. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, Okay, it's fantastic. It's a little squirrely uh, landing and taking off. It's, you just got to – maybe I can dial the rudder down. This was like, just like my first flight on it, right? But anyway, you can dial the rudder down a little bit maybe. But it was – the first takeoff was beautiful, and then finally my last landing was beautiful. But my two or three other landings were like figuring it out. And then uh, the second and third takeoffs were like a little squirrely. It wanted to hunt um, with the tail. But other than that, like just that just makes it fun and keeps it interesting. It's a little bit more challenging. Right. Yeah, but, definitely. 
when it's in the air, it's amazing. It flies awesome, aerobatic, amazingly slow with full flaps. It's got the split flaps and it's like two centers and two outboards. Um, so it's like almost the whole wing is flaps seemingly. And they go down a long ways. And I tell you, it slows down to a crawl uh, with full flaps. And I was able to come in and do some of these circuits, like figure eight circuits, like a foot off the ground. Like people were scared I was going to hit the you know, <laughs> using that rudder to do flat turns. Yeah, it was just so pretty looking and just slowed down so well. But then it was also fast if you wanted to be. And aerobatics felt really good, like a sport plane. I really liked it just after a couple of flights. Um, and then the other thing we flew was the uh, the new revision of the F4F Wildcat from park zone yeah, this was a, that one. You know, a hand launched belly land um it did have a scale kind of looking tail skid it wasn't actually a wheel but it, there was he said it didn't have landing gear and i said yeah there's a tail wheel right there um but anyway it's like a it's grabbing a football that fuselage is so big you know but it's real easy i mean i could just go like that and at three quarter throttle and it just takes off really nice and easy so it doesn't have uh, – does it have fixed landing gear you can stick to it or not? Uh, if there was, I, it wasn't on them when we had them. I don't think there's a space for it. It's got it's got the the kind of the landing gear, how they're kind of – Oh, yeah, and ball. that's probably why they just decided to do yeah. it. Wow. Yeah. So the Very complicated. Kind of they're in, you know, plastic or foam or whatever tucked in like they're retracted up. Um, but it was fast and aerobatic and fun and slowed down really well. I was able to like kind of land it right in the grass, right next to our feet for the video. Um, but that was cool to get your hands on. That's the AS3X inside. I don't know what other uh, revisions they did from the previous version, but Mike uh, should cover that in the review. But both great flying airplanes, as I've just really come to expect after years of experience with Horizon stuff, they've got great – you know, product guys that know what they're doing, know how to fly, know how a plane should fly, and, and they usually get all their stuff to do what it's supposed to do. So cool stuff. We'll look for that review from Mike on both of those coming out here shortly, I believe. And Matt, the uh, F-27 that I volunteered to do the review for, I'm pretty sure I had one in my hands of what they, she was going to, or what Kim's going to send me. It's very little. Yeah. It's tiny. Yeah. Well, Jason flew it. And the one I'm getting, Jason, I told her, I said, look, I'm, I'm going to, I'll probably use that to set up on the IX-12 when I do the reviews, go ahead and send that and I'll do both. And I said, I'll be FPV in it. So she's sending me the nose cone with camera and all that good stuff. So tell us about that a little bit. Well, so the first thing he says, he's, he's getting ready to hand it to me. He's like, I want you to fly this. I'm like, okay. And then the first thing he says is this FPV antenna sucks and I don't have any range out of it. He's like, this other guy that we were flying together, mine would cut out, and then he still had it. So this antenna, I need to swatch it out. But I haven't I haven't swapped it out yet. He's like, here, just fly. I'm like, well, that sounds great. <laughs> so basically just keep it on the runway. Okay, sure. It made it small enough. You'll know when it doesn't work, right? Yeah. <laughs> but luckily it had safe on it. So I was like, okay, show me the safe switch. So if, if I ever cut out, I could hit that. It'll you know, fly itself, just pull the throttle back, let it land wherever it's going to land. So I felt okay. But I was still like, man, this is – this is some scary stuff. It's not my airplane. This could cut out at any moment. Um, but it, it did great. I kept it, you know, within the field bounds real easy. It's pretty fast. The roll rate's insane. He he didn't even have it where I can put it on 100% rate. I only had it to like 80% rate. And when you rolled in the goggles, I mean, it was a blur. It was like, whoa, it was pretty cool. Very cool. Uh, but it's just like a tiny thing. You can horse around with it. Uh, you can fly it slow and you can – go through anything. I mean, it's so small. It'll fit through any tight gaps or, you know, fly around trees and under brushes and you can just be easy with it. And if you ever get in trouble, hit the safe switch flies itself. I mean, it, it doesn't get much easier. One of the other FPV guys that was there at the field, um, the last time he said he was there flying it, uh, immediately was like, I got to have one after he saw it fly. He's like, this is too perfect for FPV. I mean, it really is like the ultimate micro, FPV plane, it can fly in wind, take it with you anywhere. You know? And what you'd pay for this plane is what you might play, pay for some gyros. And, you know, uh, has, uh, uh, let me look it up. Before I'll put I you on the spot. But I, I have a number in my head, but I don't want to get it wrong. It, it's got, it has AS3X, of course. So you have that going. $200? Mm, I'm going to. It's not the, uh, 
is it park zone or um, f27 that's what i had in my head 139 dollars. 39 bucks with all the fpv gear receiver all that stuff to me it it was uh bigger and so when he handed it to me i was like is this really the f27 <laughs> i must have seen a different play and they showed me some prototypes when i was down and then the one i handled was not this little oh uh, that's cool I'm excited now after seeing it. I'm like, heck yeah. How, how would I not want to say yes? I want this play. <laughs> so, um, boy, it's pretty early to, to do our, uh, the biggest thing of the show. Maybe we'll hold off. Jason, why don't you talk about that uh, DLG that went in 200 miles? Oh yeah. Yeah. That's Matt showed me this earlier today. I was like, ah, I've got to write a story on this. This is too crazy. Uh, it was a couple of years ago. This guy, uh, man, what, Part of the world is he flying in? I he's in up. Sweden, I think. Sweden. So this guy's flying in Sweden. He's flying this DLG. Here, let me uh, pop it up on my screen here for you. Uh, application window. Bam. So he's flying this beautiful DLG. So JJ Edge, uh, one and a half meter, you know, sub eight ounces, super, super nice, great mm -hmm. flight DLG. He was flying it, having a good time, and then he lost it. I don't know if he lost signal control or just pure sight of it. Somehow he lost it, right? And it just flew away. Bye bye. See you later, or not. Mm -hmm. So it just is gone. You know, there's no way. It's so high. It's so it's just taken off. You know, you think it's gone forever. I think luckily he had his like name and information, which you know, did. smart yeah. thing that we should all be doing on our models. Um, so it's gone. Two years later, he gets a call, and it's a guy that found his airplane. And it was 300 and what, 50 kilometers away, like 200 oh miles. 200 plus miles away from where he flew it from. That is insanity. It's unbelievable. So they're, you know, they were thinking in the in the thread, they're talking about uh, maybe it hit a you know, thermaled up into a jet stream and then that just carried it like super fast and far till it eventually came down. But you can see the kind of aftermath. Um, oh man. This is what two years sitting out in the elements will do to a glider. <laughs> go to that, uh, go to that, uh, page with the, um, sort of the track that it yeah. ended up. It's actually, so either that was like either it got caught in a thunderstorm or a high cloud or just went up and, got in in high level winds or it did hit the jet stream either <laughs> or the jet stream was way started. up there so we, i i would think that it it could have literally just gotten caught in a in a in a big thunderstorm way up high or something my thoughts are i guess i wonder if the battery held the um just, the yeah. control surfaces straight then the battery died or it could have stayed i mean Long, depending yeah. on that battery could have stayed going. It doesn't really require much, you know, for right. the servos yeah, yeah. to hold. So who knows what happened, but this is the, it's all yellow lines, but that's the track right here. Can yeah. you imagine if you had onboard camera of this? I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Somehow you had an onboard camera going that had enough battery and it would have been one heck of a ride. What this, what's, I wonder what story that thing could tell. Yeah. You know? It missed all that water. <laughs> and here's yeah. the much more here's the much less glamorous uh um scenario is that it just crashed on the other side of his field somebody found it they put it in their car they drove <laughs> they were just happened to drive they drove it all that way and then uh you know they they decided to try to throw it and they threw it and lost it and they left it there <laughs> but i like the first one is much more plausible yeah use your imagination right yes so that this reminds me of a LA Johnson story, LA. Um, I forget what it's called. It was a competition they used to do in the old days where you'd have, you build your own plane. You had a motor, you put a certain amount of gas or low fuel in there and you started it and you threw it and it went straight up until it ran out of fuel. Mm -hmm. And then whoever stayed up the longest won, right? So his went all the way up and then he lost signal. And instead of just going straight up, it just simply flew away. So he said he sat there and watched it fly away, thought about it a little while, got in his hard car and went home, mm -hmm. took his wife to the movie. They went to eat dinner. They came home and the phone rang and he answered it. And a farmer said that he was on his tractor plowing up a pasture and he looked over and he saw his airplane, LA's airplane land right next to his tractor in a plowed row 
and it was 110 miles away from his home. Holy moly. Really? Yeah. No way. 110 miles on glow fuel. L.A. Johnson doesn't tell a fib. (laughs) (laughs) The wings must have been filled with nitro. (laughs) It must have been caught a wind. Yeah, like like you're saying, yeah. Who knows if the prop was spinning. I mean, if the motor probably was not spinning. But, yeah, it probably caught a thermal or caught some uh, winds aloft and just went to town. (laughs) So, Matt, I heard that you had some trouble with your ready-made RC plane. What happened? Um, okay. Yeah. Let me get the plane. I'll, I'll get it right here. Stand by. Oh, okay. So we showed this plane last time. I'll show it again. It flies and it flies really well. I had some problems with the FPV feed. So here she is right here. Uh, this is probably one of the most high tech, uh, gob- nano goblins you'll see. I don't know of anybody else that's done this. Maybe they have, but I don't know. So anyway, the antenna on the back and the one hanging down underneath there is the uh, Dragon Link. So we do have 433 long range with this one. We have, uh, there's our uh, VTX. It's a cricket. And then inside of here, as you can see, let's see if the easiest way to see this is the um, micro vector. So everything is on a weight reduction plan, including the run cam right here that, that actually has a uh, 1080p video feed wow so it records 1080 so everything is is very compact very lightweight however what i had to do was strip this thing down uh, on the inside and i literally took all the wires off of the micro vectors um, uh, current sensor and I took off the shielding on the current sensor, which I should not have done because at full throttle, I started to get some really funky lines across my FPV feed. And it was to the point where it was cutting it out. So I have a new current sensor coming. I didn't feel like soldering it all back together. Um, luckily, uh, John at Eagle Tree, who's totally awesome, sent me another bare bones current sensor so I don't have to desolder any of the XT60 on it or anything like that. But uh, this thing comes in at 269 grams, fully autonomous, fully ready to fly, long range. It'll fly for 45 minutes with the battery in it, 269 grams. Yeah, the, rec- the recommended uh, max weight uh, by ReadyMade was uh, 250, so not too shabby. And this little tiny prop on the back, you literally have to launch this thing at full throttle just to get it going. But once it gets up on the wing, you can dial back your throttle. And like everyone says, it'll fly forever. I did all my test flights. I flew four flights um, and it's, I stayed up. I don't know how long I stayed up per maybe, uh, you know, five, six, seven minutes, maybe tops 10 minutes uh, and then landed. And I had 78% battery left uh, out of a full pack. So it is like you, just like that F 27, this thing has an incredibly fast roll rate. It's just all Elevon. And um, I'm really digging it, man. So just waiting for that new part to come in. I'll put it in there and, and go fly it. But it's it's very lightweight. It launches and goes. And, and once you get up on the wing, it's um, a very efficient airframe, as you can see. It doesn't have a whole lot sticking out. In fact, that gigantic uh, antenna there is the only thing that's sticking really out into the wind. So that's it. Awesome. awesome. So hey, speaking Jason. of, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, Jason, is this your new office? Uh, I'm not sure. This is the, the kind of loft, the big room upstairs that it's going to be media and gaming and stuff, but I don't know if I'm going to put it in here or in my new hobby shop when I get it set up. In the hobby shop shop, what's in your shop? Right now there's plastic all over the floor there and paint cans and trays and everything. And you're you like have a pink carpet. Taking a while. You're like a newlywed couple. Have y'all eaten pizza and drink champagne? Oh, well, pizza, yeah. Well, here it is. Very exciting. The IX-12. I have some things to say. So um, I have not flown an airplane on this yet. I have simply uh, opened it, and I like we watched TV after dinner last night. And I You just and the IX-12 watch TV? Well, the wife and I and the oh. Oh, okay. So I had my iPhone out and I was uh, doing things like that. So here's the box. 
This is actually uh, the just the transmitter, no receiver, no servos. You know, you can get a whole full blown kit. Yep. And Kim was like, "Do you mind?" And I'm like, "No, that's fine." I mean, everyone likes an extra receiver, but I was fine not to get one. And really, you know, you get your strap and you get your plugs. Um, I'll tell you what's not in here that's very cool. And you get, well, I'll just stop right there. Um, this thing charges via micro USB, uh, USB, which means you can charge it. I charged it off my computer last night. You can charge it off of a uh, power block if you're yeah. in the field. Out or, the or a cell phone um, charger. Yeah, anything USB will charge it. And uh, when we look at the screen, I'll pull the camera closer. But it has a SD card slot, and then right above that is where your USB plugs in. And yep, they've officially gone high tech. No more barrel jack. Yep. The barrel jack's gone, which is great because the plug that came with all my uh, spectrum transmitters doesn't say spectrum. Mm -hmm. And I would be like, is this the right one? Maybe this is yeah. for different radio. Am I going to smoke it? I've never smoked a transmitter. I don't think I can remember doing that. But I know. All... Shame on anybody that switches polarity on one of those barrel <laughs> jacks. Oh, that's just the yeah. worst thing you could ever do. <laughs> Who in the wrong mind? But I always worry about it. We're so now, yeah. they are. We're back in the day. We're opposite each other. Yeah, it's just like um, uh, Thunder Tiger batteries oh, and their proprietary balance taps. Yeah. The great news is now I don't have to worry. So first, before we get into the tech aspect, and this is a first look. I'm doing a full review. This is me talking as if you and I and Jason and I were at the field today. Uh, let me say I, I had a DX18, which I thought was the Cat's Meow, the V1. And then I went to the DX9 Black, which I'm not getting rid of. And then uh, this came in. And so first, let me talk about feel. This thing feels like my radio. And we'll I don't touch the feel of spectrum. I don't know what that means. I don't know why this feels like my radio. But it, I mean, just after handling it a couple of times, I'm like, this feels like my radio. The other thing I'll say, and it's, it seems like a little nitpicky thing, but I'm always not happy with my sliders and the sliders yeah. on the, I made Jason, Jason, aren't the sliders nice? Yeah. They're one of the first things I, I was like, Ooh, <laughs> that's what I did. <laughs> hey, this, ooh, well, hello there. I called horizon <laughs> and I'm like, sliders with my fingers. they said, did the IX 12 come in? And I said, Oh, the sliders are so nice. <laughs> so, uh, the other thing I'll point out is the, uh, the uh, sticks, if you wanted to adjust them, the firmness or the ratcheting or anything like that, it can now all be done without taking the radio apart from the front. Oh, with a little Allen wrench? Yeah. Or with a, a hex, hex head wrench? Yeah. I, I think you can use a Phillips on one and the rest are all Allen wrenches and it comes with the little Allen wrench. But you can get in here and, uh, and make all your tweaks from the front of the radio. The other thing that Jason was excited about because he's left-handed is you can make any switch do anything any other switch does through the programming. So, you know, in some transmitters, you'd have to actually take the switch off and mm -hmm. do something, but that is not the case now. We've actually moved into the future, and uh, you can do it. It has uh, 250 uh, uh, plane memory slots. I can go, I can USB or, uh, yeah, USB out all my models off my nine and it, they'll go, they say they'll go straight into this 12. So that's pretty you know, awesome. The question still um, begs to be answered. Have you played PUBG yet? No, I, I didn't even, <laughs> you didn't ask me. All right. If I had it ready. Oh, I now. bet you could have mobile on that maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, so, you know, cause PUBG mobile is freaking amazing. Okay. I just had to say that. Let me move this camera. And uh, well, the only thing I would say that surprised—I mean, like the thing that had surprised me the most when he handed it to me it was off. I turned it on, and that you get this cool little—you know—the Spectrum logos kind of trickling down the screen like an old video game or something. Yeah, that right there. I like—I was sitting there, and I was like, "Okay, it's going to come on. It's going to come on." Wow, this what? isn't coming on. Wow, what's it, what's it doing? Wow, this is not coming on. It and I was like, I could go get lunch and come back, and then we'll see if it's on. It just—it felt like it took forever. Is that the startup sequence right there? Yes. The boot it hasn't started yet. It's like a two-minute boot process for the uh, oh, for the OS. Now, brutal. The, well, there you go. I don't Sorry. think that's two minutes. 
no, that was that was uh, two minutes in, um, you know, hyper- hyperbole world, I guess. I wonder if I can. No, you're not. You can back it up a little bit. It probably. But luckily, it. what they what Jim told me is that you basically you turn it on once when you get to the field, and then you turn it off, but you don't. It's like a sleep when you're at the field. So when you're ready to, you know, go fly a different model, fly something, it just it's instant, instant mm-hmm. back on. So it's basically like. You hard boot it once when you're at the field and then you put it to sleep every time he's done flying. So you would treat this like you would a phone. You don't yeah. turn it off and you charge it like it will. So this is actually the software. This is not how I envision this working, but maybe it'll look good. No, I can see it. So yeah. um, is it still booting? No, no. Now it's going into an application. And while it's, well, I can't really jump in on it. While it's about to show you what you would use if you were setting up an airplane. Heaven forbid you're at a contest and they're like, okay, you've got four seconds to get your plane in the air. Like whoever's voice that is, I'm not sure. But, uh, and you're like, hold on, let me wait for the boot sequence on my new uh, IX-12. There you go. I was trying to turn it sideways. It was fine. Uh, I don't think that's very. That's all you can do. There's no other way. So these are all the apps. Oh, Facebook. So it's very much like a, uh, well, it's not very much. Like it's just like your phone or a, or a mm-hmm. tablet. And then when you want to get back into your, your radio information. I see Adobe PDF in there for all of the uh, PDF files for our airplanes. That's really good. Well, the beauty about the PDF is that the manual for the uh, transmitter is literally in the transmitter. So mm-hmm. if you ever have any issues, it's not like, where's my manual or I have to get on the internet. It's literally in the, in the TX. And yeah, so Jan, Jan RA says it's slow boot and port hardware. I don't, I mean, I don't know about the hardware, I don't know anything about it, but the boot process is annoying the first time because you're used to it booting up, you know, instantaneously with all that, you know, stuff. But you just have to reframe how you use it and think about the transmitter. It's you're going to boot it up, you know, when you get to the field, and then it's you may take a while, but boot it up while you're putting your plane together or whatever else you're doing to get set up. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, it's on and ready and then it's, it'll last, you know, the whole day and you can fly, change models, all that stuff, put it to sleep when you're done flying. And it's, and it's there. You don't have to do that two minute hard boot up every time you want to fly. So I think it's just going to take an adjustment for some people, but I like where it's going and how it's pushing transmitter technology forward and, um, you know, maybe the hardware is slow and laggy compared to the newest iPhones and stuff, but I, you know, that the, change too. It, well, you would only consider it slow on a startup. You know, I wouldn't, it's not laggy at all. Once you get in there, the other thing I'll say is that I can, uh, hook this up via Bluetooth to anything. I can hook it up Wi-Fi to, uh, anything, including it was it Wi-Fi to my house. And then I got it talking to my phone. So I can take a picture of my airplane that I'm setting up and I have a share it program on here and click the share button. And then that becomes the uh, screen image for that airplane model when I'm firing it up to go fly. I like it. And so, like I say, uh, a day to two days worth of a charge and you can plug it in via USB to anything and you leave it on all day. You just put it in sleep when you're not using it and then you fire it back up just like your phone when you're ready to go. So the boot process doesn't uh, is not present then. But let me say, man, as a radio in general, it just feels really good. It looks good too. And I'm partial to my nice Futaba over here, but uh, it's six nine. It doesn't do what yours does. Yeah, I wish we could see the screen better. Matt, could you jump up on uh, Google IX12 and we could go look at some screens and I could talk a little more on. It. Yeah, sure. That way they can see what I'm talking about, as opposed to this shot right here let's see uh am i looking for an article that uh, our article that we uh, did on it? I'll go to the horizons page whoa whoa watch out what's wrong hard close-up as you can see i've been playing some acoustic guitars lately all right here we go let's see we'll do a share screen present to everybody like this share and bang here she is tap it in just tap it in 
So uh, one cool thing, I don't know if this is haptic, Jason might know. Um, whenever you touch the screen, you get a vibratory sense back to let mm -hmm. you know that you've inputted uh, something, which I actually really like and wish my phone act did it that way. So this is talking about the ability to pop off some covers and adjust your sticks. Mm -hmm. Let's see uh, if we can find some. Uh... There's, there's a series of YouTube videos done by Petrato, and I don't remember the other guy's name, but um, it's everything this radio does, and I'm going to include it in the review because they do it so well. So there's your setup on your airplane right there. So that mm -hmm. photo could actually be just your plane sitting on your bench. And it's amazing the amount of stuff you can do and the voice features as well. Voice features on any and everything. Also has a lot of telemetry options. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has a lithium ion battery in the back. And, and that's model adjust. Oh, there's your uh, expo. And it, let me say also, it's pretty intuitive if you're used to running your uh, DX. The IX uh, feels similar in nature. Of course, it's different because it's better. I can't imagine the amount of time they had to spend to make this work. There are so many pieces to this puzzle. Yeah. Did, did they say how long they had in this thing? Like uh, how many years did Steve say how long it's been in? No, but if I had him here, that would be the, now that I've had it in my hands, that would be the question that I would ask first. Mm -hmm. How many people and how long did you work on this? Oh, so scroll and feature there. That's nice. Yeah. It's all touch. Hey, there he is. David and his Same gigantic P 47. That's some good weathering. So it really brings today's uh, tech into our transmitter. And, Oh, I meant to say this, the uh, transmitter itself is totally separate from the OS. So anyone that's like, I would never trust my uh, $8,000 airplane running on that. It doesn't run on that. They're two separate features. In fact, yeah, I remember people complain about that and they got shut down real quick when yeah. you're like, yeah, it's not even connected. So if the, if it fails, you still fly. If you, let's say you got up and you had fully shut it off the night before and you're waiting on the startup, you can fly while the OS is starting up. If you're, you know, you were flying your little quad and it was on that model, you can turn it on. You're still on that model and you can fly around. As oh, so the, during the boot process, it is transmitting RF. Yeah, you can fly around. It well, does. I must it, say, it does it. it's beautiful. That's a good looking glider. Look at and that. it's, and it, my, my question would be that how do you know what model it's on? Yeah, that's a good question. It's a good question. It, can you, that one time where you remembered from last time. Yeah, I guess. If you scroll up to the price there. At, yep. because that's a other pretty amazing feature 699 seems cheap well it's even cheaper when you back it up a notch and you do it without the uh right the um receiver, receiver. 599 oh. dude that is l less money than my futaba and it's a 12 channel i was on the phone yesterday with Haler and uh He's like, well, what you got? What are you doing lately? And I told him about this. And he said that he, nine years ago, he bought a JR for 900 bucks. Mm. So he's like, I'm just going to go buy. It. And I, nice. I went down and downloaded the shared app. Um, the reason I put Facebook in there was that I wanted to see if I could Facebook photos and stuff straight from the field. And I guess the next thing to put on there is RC groups and then try the same thing. That'd be even mm -hmm. better. There's the old uh, Google search. You got Spotify with some music. Uh, looks like you can do are those wireless. Oh, yeah, you can do wireless uh, headphones. headphones. You are no longer tethered. So they did a thing. This doesn't apply to anyone listening now unless you were lucky. The first 100 buyers received a legend package in the mail. And it was a box that looks like this box, except it had a Hold coffee on, I cup. I can't see anything. Let me uh, cancel. Oh, there's nothing to see. Uh, oh, okay. It was just like your transmitter box, except it came with um, a coffee mug and a hat and wireless ear earplugs, and it was all free for the first 100 buyers. Huh. I wonder how you got in on that, how fast you had to click the buy button. Uh, good question. There is a guy, I found him on uh, uh, YouTube, and where he got it. He didn't even know he was getting it, so he said, I, wanted, I haven't even opened this yet. I don't even know why I got it. What do you mean? He just received one and didn't buy it? Yeah, he registered. If you registered your radio, then you got 
the legend pack. Oh, so he cool. bought the transmitter, registered it, and wasn't aware that he was getting this all this free stuff. Well, I get to put my hands on this thing at uh, Toledo tomorrow, hopefully. Nice. Yeah, yep. so Matt's headed up to Toledo. It's down the street from his house. He just got a, he's going to get on his bike and head over. By down the street, you mean 150 miles or well, so. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's more down the street than you you guys are. Right. So uh, yeah, I'll be going to Toledo and I'm looking forward to seeing based on all the big industry news uh, with Habico and Horizon. It'll be it'll be fun to see what's going on in their separate booths or are they going to be combined, which they're not going to be combined, but they may be near each other. They may be some back and forth or they'll be separate. But we figured out is Horizon going to be there? Yeah. Yeah, Horizon will be there. And, um, and the good news is, is uh, there's no, there'll be no competitive nature. So it'll yeah. just be Horizico. Right. I wonder if like, the Horizon, like, walk over to be like we own you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <that's... laughs> so uh, we're talking about something. Most of you already know the bank did take Horizon's bid of $18.2 million. And Horizon took over. This was the question I had, and it was answered. All RC aspects of Habico. Now that excludes theoretically Futaba, because uh, Habico didn't own Futaba; they're a distributor of Futaba. So Futaba gets to decide what they're going to do, and I don't believe anyone's commented on that as of yet. But what does that mean for Real Flight? Um, as far as I know, Real Flight was a title owned by. Uh, I am not a lawyer, and I don't portray one on TV. We Habic, gotcha. uh, it was a uh, real flight. The title is owned by Habico. And so uh, now it's owned by Horizon. So hopefully, uh, well, not hopefully, but I assume it'll just be, it'll be continued uh, in the way it's been going, you know, and now it's distributed on steam. So we have a digital version that we can go and download. So, Hey, but you know what is really interesting so there is a, I, I can say this without saying this, but there is a plane, a new giant scale plane that's supposed to, that was supposed to come out at uh, top flight. It was, uh, and that's all I can say. Uh, I was sworn to secrecy about what actually it is, but it's a new plane, everybody. And it's not one that um, has been in the lineup before. And I think it might, uh, a prototype of it might be there tomorrow. So I just, Received an email from Habico. Would you like me to read off these planes that they have for review? Uh, yeah, go ahead. And we actually did the news story on one of them back in December 2017. So if this is in my inbox, then I'm not breaking any laws or not, rules. It went to everybody. Vista Grande EPR, two meter electric cell plane that features an all wood frame and brushless power. Hyper Cherokee ARF. RXR, mm -hmm. these have wood construction and scale features. Uh, I have a lot of people complaining about foam lately, so this should make them happy. Slow Ride 3D EPR designed by Gary Wright. Gary Dave Wright Dave. special, man. Yeah, this airplane was created for super slow 3D maneuvers. So we got um, we got another sort of uh, 3D aerobatic balsa buildup from Gary. We got that Cherokee Piper, and we got uh, a glider. And it's got a lot of dihedral in it. So three you heads. Have this email, Matt? Yeah, I do. You, maybe you can bring it up and show a picture of the plane. Well, my inbox would be all front and front and center. So, uh, you know, the interesting part. Oh, yeah, you're right. The interesting part is that uh, the takeover or the switch over the move over is happening right now. And this email came out today. So that's very interesting. Yep. I do. I do know there should be more information about everything on Friday. And the minute that I get that, I will create I a news article. I got them. Here we are. It's on the, okay. So I'll just do a quick share. Once again, I've gotten pretty good at this present to everybody and we'll head over to tower. And here's the glider, the Vista Grande del Boca Vista. Sounds like uh, coffee. <laughs> yeah. I'll have a Grande Vista, please. Vista. Lots of uh, dihedral. <laughs> so there she is. Little girl. Nice looking little plane. Look at that. Nice colored variation from the bottom and the top not that you'll see anything else but the bottom when you're flying a glider like this so that is pretty cool good looking plane good to see some balsa built up again and it comes with esc and uh looks like a, it comes with the motor although i don't see it in this oh no there it is buried inside the fuselage and then the other 
is the uh, this Gary Wright machine here. Sixty three. This is a big. This is a big plane. This has almost got a sixty five inch wingspan. So you got your slow ride. I just had to do that. Big um, side force gins on there. Look at that. Kind of has what? a Cap 232 tail on it, doesn't it? You know what's really weird is that um, it, that I would feel like uh, we were just talking about a Horizon product. Now we're talking about a Hobbico product. That's good variation. But then I realized that I'm talking about Horizon products too now. Total gear shift of all this stuff. Yeah. So this is a good looking airplane. And uh looks like it's gonna fly pretty well on a two uh what is that? A three S twenty two hundred. That's a tiny mo uh tiny power. This thing must be light. Look at those deflections, Jason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that thing is like some... a good time right there. <laughs> now, now, Gary Wright didn't invent three D. Uh, there, and I've written articles debating on who did, but Gary Wright definitely is an early, early uh, great grandfather of the 3D revolution. So who better to design that? Yeah, so but- not shown in here is the um, Cherokee. And uh, you know see. what you did just see that my your people may not care about, but Axial, who I'm a huge fan of, there it is. Uh, yeah, sent, sent an email yesterday, uh, and so they're moving over to Horizon. So that's pretty awesome. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right. So here we are. Here's the uh, Cherokee. That's pretty like interesting a, scheme. Yep. Very uh, civil aviation oriented. Looks just like a real one, kind of, you know. So uh, I dig it. Here we are. Here's a little video. Mm-hmm. Shot. Oh, I, got, I got a story about a Cherokee. Uh oh, really? I heard it at the field today. You okay. won't believe this. <laughs> there, there's this guy in town. And he's, I've flown one of his turbine jets before years ago, and he had several jets. Anyways, dad's a full scale pilot. He's got his pilot's license and he ended up trading uh, a Bob Violet uh, turbine jet straight up for a Piper Cherokee airplane. And he, and he, he flew it to a triple tree, uh, but he traded an RC turbine jet for a full scale Cherokee airplane. Isn't that crazy? You remember when we were at uh, in Oregon and we went out to the field and there was that old uh, airplane sitting there with a 55-gallon drum where the yeah, engine yeah. was? Maybe that's what he traded it for. It, yeah, it can't have been a very nice. <laughs> <laughs> but still, it's a full-scale airplane. That, flew that is Somebody was like, get this airplane off of my hangar. He flew it to Joe Nall. It must have flown. Yep. yep. <laughs> yep. We're both like, yep. <laughs> so uh, that's an interesting story, man. But uh, yeah, so I'll be at, at um, Toledo this weekend, and my goal is to get there at a good hour tomorrow. I'm going to drive there tomorrow, try to cover some of the floor. I don't know how much live stuff. I, I don't think of, well, well, we may do a little bit of live broadcasting. You know what? Live um, never works off that floor. Everybody knows. Know. It, it yeah, doesn't so work anywhere. I'll try to do like a photo flood and then some interviews. We'll upload it when I get back on Saturday afternoon. And um, we'll have a nice little. Uh, okay. You probably thread. won't upload Saturday, uh, but I, I do want to say Robart will be there, and they have some new products to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that Extreme Flats was there yesterday because I saw him eating a frickers or a dirty bird or something. Dirty bird. And so Hopico Horizon um, information coming out of there. And ready made RC. Do we verify that they're there? Were they on my list? They're usually there. I would think that they do very well with sales there. So I, I would don't think see them on my list. Uh oh. That doesn't mean anything. That list is not. That I mean, list the list said that Hobby Hobby King was going to be there too, but they weren't. Yeah. So who knows? You'll know when you know. You'll know and when, when you, you do. do. You won't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was said to me by Bubba Spivey at Toledo. It's oh. uh, you might want to take a drink for him. I'm really good at butchering that line. I don't even know what is said half the time, but I just make the noise and say, if you do, you will. And that's I, all that matters. I never realized Bubba Spivey would speak such a truth that rings throughout my head all the dang time. You don't know what it is, but when you do, you will. <laughs> Maybe it's just so stupid. It makes sense. It really does make, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> 
Oh, you know? man, we're at the top of the hour. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm doing tonight, fellas. What is that? Uh, heading over to my buddy's house, and we're going to watch the season finale of Drone Wars. Maybe a win. Yeah, I, we're in the top four. It's the finale. We'll see. Do you know who won? What do you mean? <laughs> you were in it. I'm just like, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Oh, uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> we'll get to find out tonight. Nice. Exciting. What am I doing? Well, I'm taking my daughter and all her girlfriends out to dinner tomorrow night. Uh, everybody's dressing up. So I'm going to wear my, my 1880s outfit with big uh, cowboy. Yeah. And all her young lady girlfriends who all look like uh, supermodels now. I don't know what happened. And so that's happening. I bought mm -hmm. bought May flowers today. Did I say that already? You did. All right. And then, uh, Matt, what are you doing this weekend? I bet you're going to a fish fry. I'm going to Toledo. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's my weekend thing. <laughs> that's right. Hey, are you going to go eat at Shorty's for me? Uh, I, I was thinking about going to Shorty's, but I don't know if I want to commit. Bring me, to that. Bring me uh, some biscuits. Our Uber rides over there have been less than stellar. This is true. So one not thing that I even need to Uber. I can just drive over there. Yeah. Maybe I'll do that. We'll see. I, I got to find somebody. I have to ask who's going out. Yeah. Maybe you catch a ride. Uh, yeah. I could just spend my whole night in the hotel bar like usual. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of, sometimes it's busy. Sometimes, sometimes it's, it's dead. That. Okay. Tomorrow night's hotel bar will be a barometer for how the show's going. It really will. If and there's if a lot gonna, of people in there, it's gonna be fun. If it's if nobody in there, goes down, the show is going down. If you're if you're broadcasting, you might as well broadcast out of the out of the bar and give us. I, I can do that. I got my cell phone. I got it. The RC Group's most largest, most active RC drinking network. We could rename you Mean Mac Gun. Oh my gosh, guys! Check this uh, out. Uh oh. I want one. Oh my gosh, hold on. It's a tiny tank. How cool does that look? That's pretty cool, man. Look I, at that. It's Lego. What can I do with such a chase a cat? Whatever you want, man. Whatever you want. <laughs> look, it's all it was all uh VTX. <laughs> yeah, it's it's VTX on it. It is so cool. That is neat though. All well, right, I want to thank everybody for joining us. Um, we, uh, Jason and I are a little sad we weren't at Toledo, but we were excited that we were able to hang out with Hobby King today at the airfield. And uh, it really was some great information, very positive. I think everybody at the field felt good about it, uh, but even halfway through the conversation. So that was yeah. awesome. But we appreciate Rob shooting a video with us. And I, but Rob, if you're watching this, I, I meant to take you to lunch. And I was headed back out there, and Jason said, up, oh, it just left. So. And Matt, I want you to have a very safe ride up to Toledo. Make sure to take care of everybody the way they like it. I'll have and plenty of uh, FG stickers to hand out as usual. So mm -hmm. if you see me, say, give me a, F you go, hey man, got any of them stickers? I'll <laughs> give them up to you. Oh, <laughs> you're asking for it. I know. <laughs> hey, don't forget your business cards. I won't. All right. Well, uh, we're anxious to see what you bring back from there. And we thank all of y'all for joining us live. And if you're not live, we appreciate you listening and viewing. And so I do believe this will become a podcast. So you'll be able to download this and listen to it over and over again. Just, mm -hmm. All right. I'm Jim T. Graham, your host. Thanks to Matt Gunn. Thanks to Jason Cole. And we'll see y'all next week on the RC Groups Live Hangout. All right. In five. Later. Later. Bingo. Bingo.